Royalty has always been a source of fascination for commoners. Just like any other family, royal families are not without their share of drama. Except that royal history can sometimes be too dramatic. The most dramatic storylines, though, have to be the love stories of royals. British history, at that, is filled with such stories. Today, we look at some of the most influential royal lovers in British history. Caroline Matilda and Johann Strunze There are few stories in British royal history as scandalous as this one. Caroline Matilda was the daughter of Frederick, the Prince of Wales, who had died four months before she was born. In 1765, Caroline Matilda was officially engaged to Crown Prince Christian of Denmark. They were first cousins. They got married in 1766, by which time Christian's father had died, making him King Christian VII of Denmark. The marriage was never a happy one. Christian took on multiple mistresses and was resentful of the marriage. Caroline, on the other hand, was disliked by all her husband's courtiers. It was also apparent from the start that Christian had some mental illness. His bouts of insanity were treated by a German doctor named Johann Struense, who was somehow able to placate the king. Johann even tried to improve the relationship between the king and the queen. The queen disliked him at first, but he helped treat her when she suffered from dropsy and saved the crown prince from smallpox. Caroline was grateful for his help, and they soon became lovers. Together, they worked to implement liberal reforms in the king's name. They managed to banish the king's favorites from the court. By 1771, Struensa was given the same power as the king. There began rumors of the queen and Struensa plotting against the king, and this enraged the dowager queen. In 1772, Struensa was arrested and executed, while Caroline Matilda was divorced from her husband and separated from her children. Because of the intervention of her brother, she was sent into exile in Germany rather than imprisoned in Denmark. She led a life of retirement in Sella and died from scarlet fever on the 10th of May 1775 at the age of just 23. Alice Perrers and Edward III Alice Perrers might just be one of the most infamous figures in the history of late medieval England. For centuries, she has been portrayed as an ugly but intelligent woman who seduced a king and became one of the wealthiest women in England. While there are no accurate records of her birth, Alice Perrers was born around 1348 in a family named Salisbury. Around the age of 12 in 1360, she was married to a man named Janin Perrers who was a jeweler. He died soon after in 1364. Around 1366, Alice arrived at court and was employed as a lady-in-waiting to Queen Philippa, the wife of Edward III. This not only gave her access to the court, but also put her in the presence of King Edward. When Alice turned 18 and King Edward III was 55, she became the king's mistress. Some records suggest that they already had an affair and the king made her a maid in the court to cover their affair. Alice came into the king's life when Philippa was ill and bedridden. After she died of dropsy in 1369, the affair between Alice and the king became even more public. Edward had already showered her with gifts in the early years of their relationship, but now Alice had gifts raining on her. She received grants of manors and land, becoming an extremely wealthy woman. She was even presented as the Lady of the Sun, taking a place of pride next to the king, which shocked everybody, as mistresses did not take the queen's place in public. Together, the couple had three illegitimate children. By the early 1370s, the king had become old and Alice was aware that she would have no protection after he died. So, she contracted a secret marriage to Sir William Windsor, who was appointed as the king's lieutenant in Ireland upon her suggestion. She was temporarily banished in 1376, but she soon returned to be with the king until he died a year later in 1377. Catherine Swinford and John of Gaunt Catherine Swinford was the daughter of Payne Rowett, a knight in the court of King Edward III. Catherine and her sister Philippa were also placed in the court household of the Queen. In 1365, she served the Duchess of Lancaster, Blanche, who was the wife of John of Gaunt, Edward III's son. Catherine was married off to one of his tenants, Sir Hugh Swinford. They had a happy marriage. In 1368, Blanche died and Catherine became the governess for Blanche and John's children. 
The next year, John married Constance of Castile. In 1371, Sir Hugh died. In 1372, there were signs of Catherine's increased status in John's house, which was a nod to their affair. Between 1373 and 1379, they had four children. The Duke's reputation was tarnished, while Catherine was called an abominable temptress. John publicly announced the end of their relationship, but they continued to meet in private. Constance died in 1394, and two years later, John and Catherine were married at Lincoln Cathedral. It caused a public scandal at the time, but they changed history. Every English monarch since Edward IV and Scottish monarch since James II has been descended from her. She is also the ancestor of many American presidents, including George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt, and George W. Bush. George Villiers and James VI and I James I, formerly known as James VI, was the son of Queen Mary of Scots and Lord Darnley. James's sexuality has always been a topic of debate. He met 21-year-old George Villiers in 1614, and they were most definitely in love. When James first met George, his favorite was Robert Carr. James's advisors, however, did not like Carr, and they encouraged James to get closer to Villiers instead. It worked. James soon became besotted by George, who was described as the handsomest bodied in England. George rose through the ranks from being cupbearer to becoming the Duke of Buckingham in 1623. Believe it or not, this affair was controversial, not because it was gay, but because James had once again chosen a love who was not fit to be a key advisor. Indeed, Villiers was corrupt and incompetent. He impeached the man trying to reform the king's finances, encouraged a row between James and the Parliament to hide his illegal dealings in Ireland, and called for a war with Spain to distract everybody from his mistake that almost resulted in the Prince of Wales becoming a hostage. If James was aware of this, he forgave him. George was by James's bedside as the latter lay dying, plagued by various illnesses. He finally passed away in March of 1625. Barbara Palmer and Charles II King Charles II had many mistresses, but nobody made as much noise as Barbara Palmer, who earned the nickname of the Uncrowned Queen as well as the Curse of the Nation. Barbara Palmer was born Barbara Villiers in 1640 to the aristocratic Villiers family. When she was three, her father passed away, leaving the family in massive debt and poverty. As Barbara grew up, she became a scandalous adult. She was beautiful and one of the most desirable women in England. There was just one problem. She was poor. While everybody wanted her, nobody wanted to put a ring on it. In 1659, she married Roger Palmer. The marriage was doomed from the start. Palmer was a quiet, serious man, while his wife was wild. By 1660, there were rumors of an affair between Barbara and Charles II. In 1661, Barbara gave birth to a daughter, Anne, which Charles II recognized as his own. While Palmer and Barbara decided that they wanted nothing to do with each other, Barbara had no problem flaunting her powers in front of Charles's wife, Queen Catherine. Once, while the king and queen were away on their honeymoon, a pregnant Barbara came along and gave birth to his child right there. While her relationship with the king wasn't exclusive, she was his most important mistress. She took advantage of that and took bribes and exploited her powers. In 1670, she was given more titles, making her the Duchess of Cleveland, but her relationship with Charles declined and became one of friendship. The king spent an evening with her just a week before he died in 1685. King Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn An example of one of the most controversial royal couples in British history is King Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn, a couple whose union completely changed the religious identity of England. Henry VIII was quite charming in his prime, tall, athletic, and a sportsman who loved to hunt and dance. He also loved the arts and languages and could play many instruments. He was married to Catherine, who could not produce him an heir. Anne, too, was intelligent, curious, and cultured. She joined the English court in 1522 upon returning from France. In 1526, Anne caught the attention of the king. He pursued her for more than a year before she finally reciprocated. Now, Henry VIII had multiple mistresses and illegitimate children, including one with Anne's sister, Mary. 
And Anne couldn't settle for the status of a mistress, so she denied the king what he desired until he married her. Henry agreed to end his marriage with Catherine. The Pope, however, would not grant him an annulment. Henry, desperate for a legitimate male heir, broke with the Holy Roman Church, sparked the Reformation, and established the Church of England, declaring himself as its head. In the years after that, Henry permanently injured one of his legs in a jousting accident. Anne suffered a miscarriage and later gave birth to a baby girl, Elizabeth I. Their relationship soured. Henry began to hate Anne and set his eyes on her second cousin, Jane Seymour. Henry couldn't divorce Anne after all he went through to marry her, so he hatched another plan. On the 2nd of May, 1536, Anne was taken to the Tower of London amid accusations of adultery and incest and was executed. Queen Elizabeth I and Robert Dudley Elizabeth I was the daughter of Henry VIII and his second wife Anne Boleyn. In contrast to her father, she declared, I will have but one mistress here and no master. The Virgin Queen never got married, but there was one suitor in Queen Elizabeth I's life who came closer than any other. This man was Robert Dudley, the Duke of Northumberland. Dudley and Elizabeth had known each other since they were children. They had both been in danger of being killed during the reign of Queen Mary and had become friends during those difficult times. His loyalty was rewarded when Elizabeth became queen in 1558 at the age of 25. She appointed Dudley as her master of horse, which had less to do with horseback riding and more with them spending time together. Robert was married at the time. It wasn't long before their relationship caused rumors all across Europe. Robert's wife tragically died in 1560, sparking rumors of murder in the courts. Even then, the queen refused to marry him. This frustrated Dudley to no end, and he resorted to jealousy to provoke her into reacting. This involved Lettuce Nollies, who was a decade younger than the queen but very similar in appearance, not surprising as they were related. The affair between Lettuce and Robert began in 1565 when Lettuce went to London for her brother's wedding. Even though she was pregnant at the time, Robert flirted with her. The queen became extremely jealous, but not enough to change her mind. In 1576, Lettuce was widowed, after which she and Robert started a real romance. As Robert realized that the queen would never marry him, he allowed himself to fall in love with Lettuce. They decided to marry in secret on the 21st of September 1578, knowing that the queen would be furious. But their secret was out before long, and the queen was horrified that Dudley had betrayed her. The queen banished Lettuce from the court and made sure she stayed away for the rest of her life. The queen eventually forgave Dudley and they became friends again, but she never accepted Lettuce. In September 1588, Robert died, leaving both the women devastated. Elizabeth died in 1603. Lettuce died when she was 91 years of age and was laid to rest beside her husband. James Hepburn and Mary I James Hepburn, the Earl of Bothwell, met Mary in 1560 when she was the Queen of France. He was a Protestant, but he supported Scotland's Catholic regent. In 1561, he was appointed by widowed Mary to the Privy Council. The two were described to have a close friendship, but there is no evidence to suggest that there was anything more going on. In July of 1565, Mary married Lord Darnley. Within just a year, their relationship had broken down due to his involvement in the murder of her secretary. In the meantime, her relationship with Hepburn became stronger. In 1567, Darnley was found half-naked and smothered in the garden of his house. Mary and Hepburn were accused of plotting his murder. As Hepburn was prosecuted and acquitted for his murder, Mary supported him from the sidelines. In desperation, Hepburn abducted Mary and took her to Dunbar Castle, where he reportedly raped her and forced her to agree to marry him. On the 15th of May, 1567, she married the Earl of Bothwell. Because of the scandal, Mary was forced to abdicate the throne. She fled to England, where in 1587, she was executed on the 8th of February for plotting to murder Elizabeth I. Edward VIII and Wallace Simpson the story of these two lovers fully changed the course of history as we know it. 
When King Edward VIII and Wallace Simpson began an affair, it caused a complete shift in the royal lineage. Wallace Simpson from Maryland ended up in England in the late 1920s with her then-husband Ernest Simpson, whose family was British. Wallace Simpson met Edward VIII, who was then a prince, in 1931 through her friend Thelma Furness, who was reportedly involved with the prince at the time. They were then invited to a fox hunting weekend where it all started. Their affair went on for years, even though she was still married and the British government was uncomfortable with it. In 1936, Wallace divorced her husband and Edward became king. He expressed his wish to marry Wallace, but he was the head of the Church of England. He wasn't allowed to marry a twice-divorced American. The British government even rejected the plan where Edward VIII would remain king, but their future children would not be heirs to the throne. Edward then decided to denounce the throne in order to marry Wallace. It is reported that this was the last thing that Wallace wanted. After just a 326-day reign, the king was stripped of his title and demoted to the Duke of Windsor. Edward and Wallace moved to France, although technically they were exiled. After his abdication, his brother Albert took over, giving himself the title King George VI. According to reports, their relationship deteriorated over the years. The Duke died on the 28th of May 1972 in Paris and was buried at Windsor Castle. Princess Margaret and Peter Townsend If you have watched the Netflix series The Crown, you might be familiar with the love story of Princess Margaret and Peter Townsend, described as the most tragic royal love story ever. Princess Margaret, the younger sister of Queen Elizabeth II, was in her teens when she first met RAF officer Peter Townsend. It is said that George VI had interviewed Peter for a position on his equerry. At the time, Margaret was just 14, while Peter was 30. It wasn't until eight years after their first meeting that the pair fell in love, at the time of the death of her father in 1952. With the 16-year age gap between them, the media tried to put a different spin on the story, but that was not why the pair had been apart for so long. Peter was married. He had filed for divorce in 1952 after he learned that his wife had had an affair. Because of his divorce, the two of them couldn't officially be together. The Parliament and the Church of England were against this union, but the relationship didn't bode well, especially as Margaret's sister, Queen Elizabeth II, was the supreme governor of the church. The palace reportedly kept their relationship a secret, but during the Queen's coronation, Margaret was seen picking a piece of fluff from Townsend's suit, which led people to realize that the pair was together. They wanted to marry, but everybody was against the union. Townsend was sent abroad for work for two years, but even after returning, they were denied permission to marry. The government proclaimed that should they marry, the princess would lose her official title as well as all her royal privileges. The princess was thus forced to proclaim that she would not be marrying Townsend. Three years later, she married Anthony Armstrong Jones, who went on to become Lord Snowden. The couple had two children and divorced in 1978. Townsend moved to France and married a Belgian woman who looked strikingly similar to Margaret. He passed away at the age of 80, and seven years after that, Margaret passed away in 2002 at the age of 71. So, which story had you hooked the most? Tell us in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and share it. Also, subscribe to our channel for more such content and hit the bell icon to get notifications every time we post a new video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.